to start out? You want us to? I'll start. Right. Or we can continue with the music. Welcome back, everybody. We're glad you returned because we have some really awesome stuff that we're going to talk about. You ready? I'm ready. All right, let's just jump right in then. So, I was reading TechCrunch. I don't know if you know TechCrunch. Mm-hmm. It's a website. Okay, they got a .com, one of those little .com things. I don't know. I guess it's going to be a big thing now. But uh, I saw a short little article from them. They had a Star Wars picture, and I said, well, I like Star Wars. I'm reading this article. And it turns out that... Um, The scientists at Swinburne University, that's S-W-I-N, burn, B-U-R-N-E, not burn, like B-U-R-N, I don't know, Swinburne. Where is it, where are they? I don't know, it doesn't say. But either way, they think they found a way to make a 3D image appear to be floating off of a screen. Now, I, I think we all know how 3D glasses not how they were, but that they were. Oh, yeah. If you have a 3D screen with 3D glasses, you put the glasses on, and this image appears to have depth to it, or it appears to pop out of the screen. Uh, usually, popping out of the screen looks terrible. The depth usually works better. Mm-hmm. Um, the 3D movies figure that out real fast. The popping out thing wears off real fast. The depth thing, it's subtle, but when done correctly, it adds a really nice depth yeah. to the movie. Um, video games with the 3DS, Nintendo figured out how to do it without having glasses using parallax screens, and it's pretty crazy. Um, no glasses. Again, it's depth, though, um, which is awesome. It's really nice for video games to have a sense of depth that you can actually kind of see. Mm. Um, but still not hologram like Help Me Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know, from our video yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, come in a graphine graphene, uh, mesh and lasers to literally float. Now, why is float in air quotes? Well, because you can't really float out of the screen. Mm-hmm. But basically what they've been able to do is um, have the image appear to be floating out of the screen. Um, not a lot of details are out yet on this other than they think it works. And they're pretty excited about it. Um, there's a lot of technical stuff about refractive index of the screen and the lasers and stuff like that. But it's pretty cool because I like um, 3D stuff. When my TV ever, if my TV ever dies, I'll okay. buy a 3D TV. You need it curved? Uh, I know I'm not into the curved thing because I like to have people over and watch movies and play like rock band and stuff. Mm. And so the curved TV kind of cuts the viewing angle down a bit more than I'd like, which is also why I've kind of stayed away from plasmas. Okay. I'll probably get like an OLED TV, and hopefully 4K TVs will be down at a reasonable price by then. And now I'll get a 4K 3D TV. That way when I watch 3D stuff, it'll be in true 1080p, not in kind of fakey 1080p, because half the pixels, you know, are switching between mm. the two. I don't know if you know how 3D works or not when they do it. Basically, half of it is one image and half is the other image, and they're split. Okay. So that way, one eye sees one image and the other eye sees the other image, and that's how it appears Mm -hmm. to be 3D, because there's actually two different images, and then the glasses make them appear on top of each other, basically. So, if it was a 4K TV, and then you could cut them in half and still have true 1080p images Mm -hmm. in both eyes instead of kind of the half in each one. Well, it'd be more than... 1080p in both eyes, but you get my point. Yeah. Anyways, I thought that was pretty cool because I like Star Wars and I like holograms and I like 3D. And I would like to have a hologram in my phone. Then I could record messages. I could send them to you. You could pop open your phone and be me standing there and I could be like, check out this cool hot dog I found. I don't know why I'd send you a hot dog, but you know, I could. Yeah. And that'd be cool. And then you could be like, look in your name and your and be like, oh man, that is a cool hot dog. Look at your hand. And then like you could send me back an image of you be like crying or something. I don't know. In 3D? Yeah, in 3D. You know, I could like see the tears running down your face. Anyways, enough of that silliness. 
Um, you ever go to Kickstarter, Chris? Um, only when we talk about it on the show. Okay. Well, I go to Kickstarter eh, about once a month to see if there's anything worth talking about. Sometimes twice a month, depending on how much news I can find. You ever hear of aquaponics? I have not. Okay. Well, the idea with aquaponics is you have an aquarium. You know what an aquarium is. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where the fish live. And instead of having the aquarium have a filter on it that just filters out the fish waste, uh, you have a plant that filters out the fish waste. Okay. The fish waste feeds the plant. The plant filters the water, dumps clean water back in. Um, if you set them up right, you can actually have the, the runoff from the plant's dirt actually go back in and feed the fish again and uh -huh. eventually get its own cycle going if you have enough plants and fish, the right, the right balance rather. Uh, so there's something on Kickstarter called EcoCube C. C was with the Q. It's basically a small aquaponics aquarium. Um, they send you the aquarium. They send you the filter. They send you the LED light that you need to keep the plant so it can get light because it mm -hmm. needs light to grow. And uh, you put it all together. You drop your fish in there. You feed it. And you plant whatever plant you want to grow. They say it works best with mint or basil. Okay. And um, you can grow. Let me show you the picture of one they grew versus the one that a normal basil. Check that out. Look how much happier that basil looks. Wow. Definitely. It's 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 amazing. This whole aquaponics as a whole is amazing to me. It's basically like your own ecosystem that you control. People like grow tilapia and lettuce, and like they eat the tilapia and the lettuce, and like they've grown their own food basically so in a weird. pond. Um, so this is cool if you want to get started and that kind of thing. This one's $59 if you pre-order it on Kickstarter. And they've gone way past their goal. They have 29 days left, which means they basically just started. And um, they already got $238,000 of $15,000. Wow. So uh, that's uh, definitely going to get funded. I think that's really cool. I think this is really cool. They've done a previous Kickstarter for the old design of the EcoCube, and this is the newer design. Um, it's it, They've gone so far over the goal that they've added that you can actually set the light to turn off and on. Hmm. Um, they haven't announced how they're going to do that, but they said, hey, you guys have supported us so much, we're going to add features for you. Um, but if you pre-order, you get the EcoCube, you get the little science project PDF. If you really want to, you can buy two of them. You can get one that's in Kickstarter green. Um, it's just really cool. These guys uh, are trying, they're really into trying to find a way to grow food better. Um, you know, for places that either have a food shortage mm -hmm. or they can't get, they can't grow certain foods because of the environment or whatever. Um, I think aquaponics is cool because you can like grow your own food like inside your house somewhere mm -hmm. so you don't have, have a garden outside you just have your fish and your vegetables or your plants whatever you want to grow i think it's pretty cool this is pretty cool uh i think the fish is probably a little bit happier because yeah. it's a little bit more natural <clears throat> the plant definitely is more happy because mm -hmm. it's definitely way more natural for the plant this way other than the led light but the plant doesn't seem to care so much about that it looks like it's improving it looks like it's a pretty clean plant uh -huh. so Chris, you just got a fish recently. Well, we both went to a wedding on Sunday. We did both go to a wedding on Have Sunday. Have a great time. It was um, a good time. And uh, they had these centerpieces. I mean, what I'm saying is I think I need one of these. I think you need one of these. I think well, I need one of these because I took this fish home. Beta. You know betas. You can get them from what? You know two, betas. Three, they eat each other. Yeah. Oh, that's not what your point was. No, I not my point. You can pick them up for two, three, four dollars. They're cool they're, fish. Yeah, they really are. You yeah. can get them in different colors. All sorts of colors. So, you know, I kept him in the bowl, you know, I, and uh, it was kind of hard. So I strapped him in. When I left the wedding, I strapped him in in the seat. And I drove over to my friend's work because she has koi fish in her backyard. And I said, hey, do you have any fish food? And she was like, yeah, I think so. But um, you can go to Walmart. And I was like, I didn't even think about Walmart. So I went to Walmart. I kept the bowl. I got some nice rocks. I got a nice little plant for her. And how I know is her is she got little fins. And so I don't, I don't think that's the way fish work, but okay. I mean, I heard I was told that if the if a fish has smaller fins, it's a female. But small compared to what? Your fins? A male fin. I mean, a male fin, I guess. But um, 
So yeah, so I put her in the bowl, you know, I, I get some fresh water in there and put the rocks in there and I put her in there and she seems to be enjoying it. I got her some food. So um, I wake up in the morning, you know, and the funny thing is, is that when I turned the light on, she was at the top of the bowl and she was, she slowly started falling to the bottom of the bowl and um, she touched the rocks and she started swimming and she woke up. Okay, that's fine. You know, um, I already had some food and there's some leftover food in there. Next thing I know, I go to work and I come back and you know, I eat and I go upstairs and fish is dead. Fish was dead. You killed the fish in a day. I don't know what, I don't know if I traumatized it by driving and changing its bowl immediately. Um, I mean, I've had fish in the past and I've never had issues. I don't know. I thought the water temperature was fine. She was fine in the morning and then she wasn't fine when I got home, <laughs> but I'm going to retry. I'll probably get one this weekend. You're a fish killer. I'm going to get another you one. You should get one of these. They're $59. It's definitely going to ship out, so uh, I don't know what the target date for shipping was. Wait, it was in here somewhere. So yeah, I'm now labeled as a fish killer. Uh, November for the orders that are left. They already sold out of their early orders. Oh, wow. But you can go to their website. I think you can still buy their <laughs> old one. But it's cool. You should look into the aquaponics thing. Uh, I'm really into it. I'd like to do it someday. I just... Can't do it right now because, well, not time so much as space. True. Being in an apartment, um, it's just kind of a pain with fish. Would you Would you consider of uh, having a beta fish and putting it up here for our podcast? Yeah, if it was yours and you brought it every week. Every week. Oh man, that's too traumatic. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know that if I had a fish. Like I said, if I had fish, I'd want to set up a whole aquaponics thing. Okay. And that's just kind of a pain in the apartment right now. I think if you were to get one and put them up here, I think it would fit. We could but replace our whole background and set up an aquarium and grow some like lettuce and tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And then we could eat them on the show. That's really cool. You can grow like a head of lettuce in like 80 days. That's ridiculous. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I'll look into that though. I mean, you could probably do it with any fish. You could probably have multiple fish in there. Yeah, any kind of fish you want. Yeah. I said it doesn't have to, it can be any fish. It's like some fish obviously are more suited for it than others mm -hmm. like you know if you were going to do like a saltwater fish it'd screw the whole thing up because you couldn't salt. feed the plants then right because mm -hmm. of the salt but pretty much any freshwater fish how big is the tank do you know is it? that one it's pretty small okay it's probably like yeah okay something like that like a normal size aquarium probably well, i mean small it's like a cube right so okay it's pretty cool you should look into that i'm going to what's next next i think your trivia is next trivia Trivia. All right, James, I do have some trivia here. All right, well, let's um, have it. And you're welcome to do this uh, to me next episode. But as the rules go, you are given 10 questions. You have four choices to choose from. Oh, it's multiple choice. It is multiple choice. It's going to make it easier on you. Good. Um, if you get the correct one, mm -hmm. the sound will check. Not work. Not work. I am working on it. Oh, dinner's ready. No, dinner's ready. Correct. Incorrect. Stop looking at my sheet. How come the incorrect's louder? Uh, this is how the app is made. And I'm sorry for any notifications that come in through my phone. That's a little negative of them. Why don't you go in airplane mode? Uh, <laughs> Even your phone was like, <laughs> dope. <laughs> okay. Everyone gets the rules. Yeah, it's if multiple you, choice. Let's also, go. if you guys like to send in some questions for James, email them. No, actually, he controls the email. So don't do that. He controls the email. And Just direct message him to, Twitter, to Chris. Yes, direct message him on Twitter. Okay. Now, if you send it to me, I can ask Chris because he doesn't ever check the email. We can do that. Okay. Ten questions. Are you ready? Okay. On average, how many licks does it take the human tongue to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? 807... 42, 364, or 555? What was it? 807. Uh, 807. That was not on my phone. That was incorrect. Correct answer, would you like to try again? It's three, but that wasn't an option. 364 was the correct answer. Says who? I've never looked one that many times. Says the average. 
point system. The I knew average. I was going to have a problem. The with. average, so that means some people look at longer than 300? I mean, it was on average, so it could be either or. So, that being said, the correct answer is 364. No, Mr. Al said it's three. <laughs> Mr. <commercial>. Al! <laughs> Next question. In short burst running, how fast can a cheetah run in miles per hour? Really fast. 35 to 40, 60 to 65, 45 to 55, or 70 to 75 miles per hour? Not 60 to 65. My mother said the right uh, the same thing, and that is incorrect. Why are you comparing me to your mom? Because <laughs> she said the same thing today. It is actually 70 to 75 miles per hour. Really? Yes. So they can run faster than you? <clears throat> yes. If I drive faster in my car, too. Well... How is George Lucas said to have given R2-D2's, R2-D2 his name? From a film editing abbreviation, real to, dialogue to, it was his postal code. It was a part of the number... It's the real. I already knew this one. Which one? It's, it's from a real. I'll give you that one. It's the correct one. Correct. It was from a film editing abbreviation, real to, dialogue to. Now, no one knows if that's actually true or not. That's just what's assumed. That's what it is assumed. According to the Rolling Stone, what was the worst movie of 2014? I read this, so I should know what it was. Transformers, Age of Extinction, Annie, Transcendence, or Godzilla? Okay, I know it wasn't Annie. I don't think they said Transformers was the worst movie. But I personally think Transformers was the worst <laughs> movie. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I heard Annie was pretty bad. Transcendence was good. And out of personal reasoning, Godzilla, you said, was really good. I didn't see Transcendence, but I, I assumed that it was pretty good. It was pretty good. So, When did Washington State become a state? 1900, 1943, 1821, or 1889, says the man wearing a Seattle shirt. Um, okay, it's either A or D. So you think it's 1900 or 1889? Yeah, it's obviously not 1943, because I'm pretty sure it was a state by then. Um, and what was the other one? 1889 and 1821. 1821. 1821 seems kind of early. I'm going to go... I feel like the uh, I'm going with 1889. Correct. I knew that one. First five questions are down. I was thinking if it was 1900, I felt like in 2000 when the 100th anniversary of it being a state, that would have been a big deal about it. Mm -hmm. I don't remember anything being said. Yeah. So I was like, okay, it had to be before that. So I went with 1889. Good. Correct. According to The Guardian, what was the best video game of 2014? Far Cry 4, Dark Souls 2, Mario Kart 8, or Titanfall? According to The Guardian. Man. Okay, they're not including The Last of Us Remastered, so that's hard. What'd you say? Dark Souls 2, mm -hmm. Mario Kart 8, and Titanfall. Titanfall. What was the first one? Far Cry 4. Yeah, it wasn't Far Cry 4, though. That was a good game. Okay. I don't feel like they would have said. Yeah, it depends on when the article came out, though. I'm going to go with Titanfall. Uh, Incorrect. You actually own this game. It's Mario Kart, right? Really. Mario Kart 8. Really? They said Mario Kart 8 was the best game yes. in 2014? I owned all those games, actually. Really? Yeah. How many years is a score? 20 years? No. 10 years? 15 years? Or 25 years? Man, I should know this because I quote it all the time. I think it's 20 years. Correct. You almost said it wasn't. Well, they said the other ones. I was like, no, none of those are right yeah. either. What is the longest bone in your body? The tibia, the femur, the humerus, or the sternum? Same again? Tibia, femur, humerus, or sternum? Remember, you have a lifeline. You can dissect two. Or ask Rachel. The or humerus is your funny bone, right? 
I hear a lot about the tibia. Okay, let's knock out two of them. Knock out two? Yeah. I'm going to knock out humerus, and I'm going to knock out tibia. Hey, of course, the two bones I recognize. So what is, what's left? The femur and the spine? Uh, f uh, the femur and the sternum. The sternum. The sternum and the femur. Aren't they both part of your butt? No. <laughs> the sternum is part of your chest. Oh, okay. And the femur is part of your leg. I'll give you that hint. I'm going to go with the femur, then. Correct. The femur is your... Connects to your hip, to your kneecap. Yeah, it's part of your butt, then. <laughs> All right. Can you have a butt without your legs? I mean... True. I mean, without your legs, but I mean, all the way up to your hips. Exactly. I don't know. All right. Now, we got two more questions, okay. and I'm pretty sure you can get one of them right. I can't believe the Guardians said Mario Party was the best. I know. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a great game. Mm -hmm. But the best of 2014? What do you think the best one of 2014 was? 2014 was a bad year for video games, because there's a lot of remastered games, because they're trying mm -hmm. to figure out the new system still, so I don't, I don't really know. What I would have said either, honestly. You're going to get this next one right. And I, you're probably going to stop me immediately when I say it. What toy company created G.I. Joe? Mm -hmm. Hasbro, Maytel, Nika, or Bandy? Bandai. Bandai? Yeah, Bandai. Pretty sure it's Hasbro. Correct. One more, James. This say Mattel again. Maytel. <laughs> Mattel? Mattel. <laughs> M A Y T E L. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's how it's spelled. This one's gonna be hard, but I'm pretty sure you can think about it. How many McDonald's restaurants are there around the world? Oh my goodness, I like literally just heard this the other day. <laughs> Twenty five thousand, thirty five thousand, forty five five hundred and fifty five, or seventy five thousand. So twenty five thousand, thirty five thousand, forty five five something. Yeah, forty five fifty or forty five five fifty five. That's awfully specific compared to the rest of them. Might be a trick question. Is this like? Is it exactly how many or no. approximately? Approximately. Okay, so it's not going to be an exact one. Then, no. That'd be stupid. Okay, Rachel won't know because she hates McDonald's. Man, I, I seriously, like, I just heard this the other day because I was listening to a podcast they were talking about about them and about them trying to expand more and, and how their earnings and stuff. And um, 25 and 35 both sound close to right, though. Well, if I say 25, technically I'm still right if it's a higher number. Are we playing the prices right now? <laughs> 25 or 35 is what I'm stuck between here. If you just asked me to say a number, I would have actually said around like 15,000. So I'm going to go with 25,000. Incorrect. Uh, it was 35? It's 35,000. Ah. You're close though, and I think you got 6 out of 10 correct. Yeah, that's a D. <clears throat> it's pretty good though for multiple choice for questions you didn't study for. That's pretty terrible. I should have known all that One. stuff. Two, three. I can't believe the Guardian said Mario Kart was the best game of 2014. I'm trying to think, what else came out in 2014? Master Chief Edition, that was garbage. Mm -hmm. Far Cry 4 was pretty good. Assassin's Creed Unity came out in 2014, didn't it? That was pretty good. Mario Kart, though, did have a real... But, see, Smash Bros. also came out in 2014, mm -hmm. though, and I'm surprised that they said Mario Kart over that. Interesting. Is there something you would you like to do this in the near future with a specific category, such as history, no, music, that was fun. video games? No, that was. You fun. can do the same thing with me next time. That was nice. All nice and random. All right, Chris, let's get out of here. Definitely, we're out of material for the week because we said, you know what? Let's talk about less stuff and be a little bit more thorough. And you know what we did? We talked about less stuff. I don't know if we were. Thorough. I don't know if we were more Man, thorough, 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 thorough at all. So, Chris, if we wanted to find you on the internet, where would we look? Twitter is never lose heart. That's all one word. Hit me up on Twitter. Ask me some questions. If you'd like uh, me to ask James some questions, you can direct inbox me. Um, you can find me on my Instagram at fight underscore with underscore heart. And it's not spelled out underscore. It's the underscore That would lines. be really long yes, if it, it was. it would be very long. So it's going to be just the lines. Underscore, underscore. 
And that's pretty much all I give out besides my vine, but no one really cares about but, my yeah. vine. <laughs> vine, come on, get that out of here. James, what about you? You can find me everywhere at James Walters, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, I'm on Periscope, Meerkat. Not that I post much on there because I do everything for the podcast, but I, I just claim my name on there yeah. just in case. You never know. Uh, you can find The Weekly Flare everywhere at The Weekly Flare. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We're at theweeklyflare.com. We're on Meerkat and Periscope. This week we're on Periscope. Next week we'll go back to Meerkat, back and forth until we find which one we like better. Mm -hmm. Or until we get an audience that says we like using this app better. So we'll keep going around until we find one that we like. Um, we're on YouTube. Um, our channel is The Weekly Flare Podcast. Because for whatever reason, they're like, The Weekly Flare's already taken. Didn't find anything close to it. I think it had to do with the Google Plus thing, though, because it, it's tied to Google Plus still. Ah. Uh, I think it was a Google Plus thing. They didn't, like, it was too close. It was too similar to like other The Weekly things, okay. I guess. I don't know. But anyways, we're there. Um... Go to our website, though. Just go to theweeklyflare.com. We have a link to Patreon on there. If you want to give us some money, we can buy some better recording gear. Uh, if we get a lot of money, we'd like to buy a better recording gear, get some live stream stuff set up. Might order a studio. Or we'll order a whole studio. So we're still working out the specific numbers for each of those goals, but those are just some of the goals we have. Maybe do like a second show like every other week, do an extra show or something like that. Also, we're on Stitcher now, so if you use Stitcher, we're on there. For all our Android users, I'm working on a way to make it easier for you if you want to subscribe to the show. Um, and that's all I have for you this week. So Chris, did you have a good week? I did have a good week. Do you have a, do you have a big weekend plan? I do. I've got a lot of stuff to do for school, and then it's all for you guys. I need to find a second job. Then, this is my second focus right here, though. This is it. This right here. I do it for you. We do it for the fans. AKA Abby and Brenton. And Phil Stringer. Apparently. And Phil Stringer, if he's still listening. Shout out to Phil. Thanks for listening. And everyone else, thank you for listening. Honestly, send us your feedback. Positive, negative, neutral. We want it. You can feedback on iTunes, YouTube. You can go to our website. There's a contact us form you can fill out. Leave us a review on iTunes. Seriously, we would appreciate to hear from you. Regardless of what you have to say. Let us know what you think of the show. What we could do better, what we're doing great that you like, what you don't like. And we'll see you again in seven days. Take it easy, everybody. Peace.